Hello again, everyone. This is Tony Nichols. I'm the senior pastor at Church Alive in Northwest Arkansas. So glad you've joined today. I want to speak to you about how to turn trials into triumphs. If you have a Bible or an electronic device, I'll read to you out of James chapter 1 in just a couple of minutes. You know, in the early church, they faced a lot of persecution and even horrendous trials. As Christianity began to grow, the devil was trying to stomp it out because it was the true authority that crushed and defeated him, what Jesus did, and reestablished the kingdom of God that took precedence over him and his kingdom. There's a lot of religion that really wasn't the, the plan of God. It became more man-made rituals. And there was a culture, the Romans, that wanted to force you into their mold. So as a Christian, as you began to walk with Jesus and proclaim the gospel in the kingdom, many of these Christians were beaten with rods or whips. Some of them, if they wouldn't recant, were run through with a sword. As gruesome as this is, some of them were dipped in hot oil and hung up at Roman garden parties, literally, to light up the night. Not only was that horrendous, but what a stench. Oh, just how barbaric. Others were fed to the lions in the Colosseum, or even stoned. So those are some pretty significant trials. As we read this scripture, that's the context and the backdrop that I wanted you to have for what James, the half-brother of Jesus, was writing as the Holy Spirit spoke to him. So may the Holy Spirit give us revelation and be our teacher today. And would you go to James chapter 1 and start with me in verse 2. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the man ought to not expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So I want to talk to you today about how to turn trials into triumphs. It is just a fact that because we live in a fallen world, we're in a place where Satan has a lot of of deception and influence over people, even as we have victory in the Lord and are walking through this life, there are trials. There are temptations. There are testings. There are these applied pressures that you and I experience. Instead of getting stuck in those, how do we learn to overcome and walk in a place of victory? So this is how, first of all, we respond to trials. We will all have an initial emotional response. When you have a trial, maybe there's a big bill you weren't expecting, or there's a car accident, or somebody's angry and they reject you, or maybe there's a financial calamity. The first response is that emotional one where it's like, oh no, or we want to exact some kind of revenge, or somehow we want to do something radical that is not the will of God. We have to learn to quickly rein that in. That's one of the first things that we have to learn to do. Because we are brethren, it's interesting, he says, consider it all joy, my brethren. That word simply means that we are a new family born again through Jesus Christ, and that we have at our access the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and the body of Christ that can come alongside and they partner with us and we partner with them. We're not alone in these trials that we face. Now, the enemy wants to get you at a place where you think, I've got to do this on my own. I'm ashamed or I can't tell anybody. Those are all mistakes, friends, because one of God's provisions is to stay connected meaningfully to the body of Christ. So we are to count, consider it all joy when we encounter various trials. He's not saying, I'm so excited that I'm suffering and in this trial. What he's saying is this, the word count or consider there means that we make a determination. I'm going to make a choice to trust God, to discover how God would have me handle and deal with this and respond because there's joy, there's victory on the other side if I'll do this God's way. 
You can take the long way around or you can take the short way through. Choose and determine that you're going to trust God and his promises by faith and you'll find that your trials will be shortened. Jesus gave us an example and it's in Hebrews 12 too. You can write it down. It says that he endured the cross and despised the shame for the joy on the other side. He determined to embrace the suffering that literally purchased our salvation and defeated the devil because of the joy on the other side that you and I would come to know him and follow him in salvation. Jesus promised us in John 16, 33, in this world you'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. There is a way to overcome these trials, these testings. So the second thing after we learn to respond, not emotionally, we all do it, stop as quick as you recognize that and turn to the Lord. Even if it's difficult, turn to him. He never leaves you or forsakes you. Then you're going to be tested. It says in this passage that our faith will be tested by these tribulations or trials that come our way. The second thing I would say to you is learn to pass the test. As our faith's tested, I want to give you a couple of truths. When the teacher teaches, the teacher talks. But when the teacher tests, the teacher is silent. Let me say it again. When the teacher teaches, the teacher talks. When the teacher tests, the teacher is silent. He or she want to know what you really understand and you know what you can apply. God already knows. We need to know where we are in our faith. And if we need to grow or strengthen, I'm sure we do, that becomes evident. And when we turn to him, he helps us. I had a seventh grade math teacher that changed my life. Her name was Mrs. Gerda Manock. She was a German, teach, German uh, heritage. She was very frank and almost a little stern, but there was a kindness in her. And so if you studied and she gave you a math test and you missed a few questions, maybe she gave you 20 questions and you missed four. And so what that gave you was an 80, which was a C plus. And she would say, but if you'll stay in during recess, I'll reteach you the questions that you missed. And if you can retake it and get the right answer, then I'll credit it at 95 or hundred percent, whatever you earn. She called them learning opportunities. She would mark red on your paper and out to the side, mark L-O. It meant learning opportunity. So you had to sacrifice recess. Let's just call that placating the flesh. And you had to stay and in the help of the spirit, receive some new teaching and you could pass the test. Actually, I learned that in the seventh grade from my math teacher and God brought that spiritual application to me as a young man, probably in my late twenties. You're going to have to respond to the trials and the tests. You're going to have to pass the test. And he will teach us how to grow in perseverance or endurance. We have to trust him no matter what the emotions and circumstances seem to declare. My confession is, God, I believe you and your promises, and I don't believe my circumstances. And I have to say to the enemy, you're defeated. You're trying to bully me, but I'm going to bully you. I have authority over you. I'm not going to believe your lies. I'm not going to give in to the doubt and the unbelief. Yes, I have done that, but I'm learning quickly to stop that and really confess that I trust the Lord, say his word, and not let the enemy control my life. Here's the third thing that I wanna encourage us to do. After we respond to the trials in a godly way, we pass the test, and I've had to take a few tests several times. Don't beat yourself up over that. Each time you learn a little more, you will pass then embrace a part of the maturing process. I like quick results. I like to get a hundred on every test the first time. And I can't tell you that I've done that very many times, but the longer I walk with the Lord, the quicker I take the retest and learn because God's way works its best. It's a process and that's the challenge for us. We like quick results. We're a fast food culture. We want to drive through, meet it, eat it, and beat it, get on with whatever we want to do. But the Christian life is not a fast food restaurant. It's a process. The process of endurance and perseverance will have its perfect results in us. It will complete its work. So without going into great detail, 
22 months ago, I had a ruptured colon injury. I've had three or four surgeries. I have one more to go. I have a large protruding colon and small intestine that they can push back in and fix, but I was required to lose 30 pounds. A little embarrassing. I normally had taken care of my body more than that, but I did. I got sloppy. I'm responsible. So I had to go on a pretty extreme keto diet. And what happened is that I lost about 17 pounds in about 18 days. And I thought, this is easy. Then my body plateaued. <laughs> and for about two and a half weeks, it didn't matter what I did, eating correctly. I, I would fast. I would cut my calories in half. And, and then three and a half week, two and a half weeks later, I gained a pound. Oh, I was frustrated. And the Lord was saying to me, I want you to learn to persevere. I want you to learn to endure. I said, but God, I want to lose this weight and I'm doing all the right things. And he said, it isn't just about losing the weight. I'm teaching you a whole new lifestyle because when you're done and this gets fixed, I don't want you going back to eating all the sugar and all too many carbs and all the things because you have said to me, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to me, the Lord, even your body. And I want to keep you healthy and last a long time because I want to use you. That's humbling. So this process isn't just about losing weight. It's also about learning a new lifestyle and new appetites and being content with that. So these trials in your life, God doesn't cause them, but he'll use them. And he's often after not only delivering you from the trials, but giving you a new culture, a new appetite, and a new lifestyle called the kingdom of God. Here's the last thing that I'll share before we draw this to a close. Ask God for his wisdom and his instructions. We respond to the trials and we get over the flesh and the reaction and we respond to the spirit. We pass the test. We have to take it a few times. We embrace a part of the maturing process. It's a process because God's not only after the issue, he's often after a long-term change. The last thing is we ask God for his wisdom and his instructions. Wisdom is taking the knowledge of the Lord with understanding and learning how to apply it. We talk a lot. We know a lot. We just live a lot less than what we talk and know from God's word. He doesn't reproach us or shame us or condemn us. But when we ask for wisdom, he doesn't always give us what we want. He gives us his wisdom. So I'm on the plateau. I'm asking the Lord, what do you want me to do? Why won't this change? And he said to me, I want to teach you how to fast a couple days a week. And I ignored that for two weeks. He was speaking to me. And finally, I said to the Lord, okay. I tried all the things that I knew how to do. And I gained a pound. I wasn't losing. And I had to admit to the Lord, I hate fasting. I love food. <laughs> and so he has been teaching me how to fast unto him, not just fast for my weight loss. And how to reappetite me so that I eat for the purpose of health and the purpose of strength not as a, an escape to medicate when I'm discouraged or an overpleasure. It's okay to enjoy a meal with people, but sometimes I would just use that as an excuse to overeat. So he began to give me his wisdom and he said, this is how I want you to handle this. And as I'm doing the things of the Lord, it's beginning to come off again. I'm headed toward the goal, not only of getting this hernia fixed, but of living a different life. So that's how you turn trials into triumphs. So when we hear God's wisdom, we must fight the fight of faith and obey what he tells us to do. We must not be double-minded. I've had a couple times in these last seven and a half weeks as I've been on this that I would do really well for a couple weeks and then I'd have a few hours where I thought, I just need a big piece of cake. <laughs> I didn't need a big piece of cake. And I would go and uh, maybe one time had a little square and it had sugar in it and everything. And I thought, see, I can handle that. Within 15 minutes, my body for the next four hours craved every kind of sugar and carb you could imagine. I had these thoughts of rush to the store and buy peanut M&Ms. Go over here. It's Wednesday at, at um, a particular restaurant and you get free pie. It was amazing what went through my head because I left the wisdom of God <laughs> and I gave into my flesh. Now, by his grace, he helped me rein that in. But it taught me again that I cannot walk in the flesh sometimes and walk in the spirit. I have to learn to follow God. So what you see in James, and I'll close with this, James was the 
half-brother of Jesus. And when Jesus was here as the Messiah, James didn't receive him. He rejected him. He resisted him. But after Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to James, James had his aha moment. He was converted and began to really follow Jesus. By 45 AD, he was such a mature man in Christ and the kingdom that he became the leader of the church in Jerusalem, even among the apostles. But James began to discover something by about 50 AD, and the Holy Spirit inspired and wrote through him the book of James. He said, many believers know the truth, talk the truth, but we're not living the truth. So the book of James has 54 um, directives and even commands on how to take the truth of God and put them into practice. And the basic truth of James is, if you know the word and you do it, you'll be blessed in all your ways. So here's James. He is really leading for about 15 years. And when Paul was converted and their champion to persecute the church was destroyed, they came after James and they said, you know, we're going to get you because we want to shut the church down. One day they trapped James in the temple outside and they said to him, renounce Jesus as Messiah. And they wanted him to spit on the ground and trample the blood of Jesus underfoot. It's what he represented. And instead of him doing that, he stood up and began to preach. And you can read the church history. He said, you are wicked men. You are lost and deceived. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Lord, and the Savior. You must repent and be converted or you will all likewise perish. And they became so angry that they rushed him, took him out of the city, and stoned him to death for his faith. There are so many men and women that have faced these various trials, and God has given the power and the grace to stand firm for him. Many were put to death. Many overcame and went on. But the fact is, if we have a trial, a test, and turn to God, he gives us whatever we need to be able to endure it and overcome. Thanks for your time today. I know that was probably five minutes longer than normal, but I hope that's really helpful. God bless you. Amen.